Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Welcome to Crochet Podcast, episode 142. Thank you so much for inviting me over. If you are new, my name is Krista and this is my secret yarnery. This channel is all about crochet and crochet related goodness. There's a podcast every Wednesday, live chat every Friday, and new tutorial both right and left handed every Sunday, plus a written pattern. So if any of that is of interest to you, consider hitting that subscribe button under this video right now so you don't miss out on any of the fun. Now before we get started, I want to give a big congratulations to the winner from last week's podcast. Congratulations to Lee Allen. Congratulations, Lee. Lee answered last week's question with, I'm trying to remember back to my college days over 50 years ago when my roommate was teaching me how to crochet and knit. One of the first things I made was a sampler afghan. I wish I had the pattern to recreate it. And I made shawls for each of my friends. I didn't crochet from the 80s until about five years ago when I picked it back up. Oh, thank you so much. Send me an email, krista at secretyarnery.com, and I will send you a copy of my latest pattern. And if you want to win a free pattern, just keep watching and I'll tell you how to do it. And now it's time for Finished Objects. <laughs> Have you seen it? This is part 11 of the Bloomscape Cal 2023. This is the single zinnia crochet flower granny square. Is that not the cutest thing? So adorable. So yes, it is a 3D flower and it is actually a granny square. It is not a flower that you sew onto a solid granny square or onto a granny square. It is all in one piece. So it is a real granny square. It is 3D, and the best part, there is no front loop, back loop. Ah, I know, right? You don't have to fiddle around front, front loop, back loop. We just do some front post slip stitches, which is so much easier, and I show you how to do it step by step in the tutorial. So these work up really, really quick. If you didn't want to do a granny square, they would also be great just sewn on to any project as an applique, right? They are perfect. They are also the same flower for the single zinnia crochet flower bouquet. That was a couple weeks ago. So just really love it a lot. So this is part 11 of the Bloomscape Cal. Bloomscape Cal is a bigger block, just like this. So once all of our blocks are made, we are ready to join them up into a gorgeous blanket. So there is already a tutorial and written pattern for this gorgeous square. I will link it up in the cards, but if I forget, you can just do a Google search for a secret yarnery and then crochet flower granny square and it'll pop right up. If you're left-handed, add left-handed to that search and the left-handed tutorial will also pop up. And now it's time to crochet with me. That was fun. I love joining blocks or squares together. It feels like in just a few minutes you have made something so big and so intricate and so gorgeous. I absolutely love it. And now I want to show you that blanket, so it's time for Bloomscape Cal Update. We 
We have made 11 blocks now. Can you imagine? 11. We have one more to go. That is so great. Is because for the Secret Stitches Cal, a lot of people wanted to give it away for Christmas, for a Christmas present, which is a great idea, but that also means it's kind of like an 11 month crochet along. And in December, who has time to work on a blanket? Do you know what I mean? I mean, we will find the time. However, it doesn't really feel it feels like it adds more stress to the season. That's all, that's how I feel about it. So we started the Bloomscape Cal early, so it will be done in advance. We won't have to rush towards Christmas. It still make a great present. That's true. But the Secret Stitches Cal was amazing. And if you don't remember what the Secret Stitches Cal was, or you weren't here for it, if you are new to the channel, let me show you what it is. The Secret Stitches Cal was one new stitch you made into a block every month and you could do all the blocks in one color or each block in a different color. And the great thing about the Cal was the confidence it gave everyone for matching up blocks that weren't exactly the same size and definitely did not have the same stitch count. It has a really cool edging and joining method that evens out all the blocks, so they all end up being the same size. Without blocking, you don't have to block anything. They're it naturally blocks just by stitching them together or joining them together. So if you wanna make your own Secret Stitches Cal, I will link all of that in the cards and the description box as well. And if you don't see the cards pop up as I go through my podcasts or my videos, I put them all kind of at the end of the video just so they don't like distract us and get in the way while we're having our nice little visit. And now it's time for upcoming live events. I love knowing what is happening in advance. Do you know what I mean? I like to know what, what I, I can put it in my calendar. Be like, okay, that's what we're doing on this day. So Friday, there will be a live chat, 5 p.m. in Nairobi. Same as usual. It's a great place to connect with other crocheters or yarn enthusiasts that have the same passion for yarn and crochet as you do. All you have to do to participate in the live chat is just put a comment. Join in on the live chat and just type a comment so we can talk back to you. We get to know you that way. But but if you're watching on a TV or you're at work with your headphones on, I know lots of you do it that way too, lurkers are welcome. So feel free to join us no matter what you are up to on Fridays. And there is also Aussie Edition live chat. That is the last Tuesday of every month and it is my morning. So it is 8 a.m. in Nairobi. And you can also ask Alexa, Alexa, what time is 8 a.m. in Nairobi in California? From travelmyth.com. That will end up being between 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. in California. Perfect. Really? I guess so. That's cool, right? So you can go ahead, ask Alexa, or just Google 8 a.m. Nairobi. 8 a.m.? Are you sure? You know you gotta fact check Alexa sometimes, right? <laughs> But you could Google it and just make sure that that is the right time. And Google will tell you for sure. I don't know about her. I don't like the five between five and this, five and six. No, tell me exactly what time it will be. It's important. Just a little detail. Anyway, we'll check. So last Tuesday of every month, I get caught up on my temperature blanket with you. We kind of get caught up on whatever you're working on. So if you're doing your temperature blanket, you can get caught up with me. If you're working on any other projects or even just doing your housework, we can do all those things together. So that is kind of like a morning session for me. And it's a different time of day than my usual live chat. So I call it an Aussie edition because it is much easier for all of our Australian friends to join us. Would you like to win a free pattern? All you have to do is... Yes, you have to be a subscriber of the channel, and you also have to answer question of the week. Question of the week is, do you have another hobby other than crochet? Is there something you love to do that is not crochet? 
For me, it would be sewing. I love to sew when I have the time and the space, and especially a clean floor where I could cut my fabric out. But I also like collecting color-coded stationery supplies. So if that was a hobby, guilty as charged, I love it. So you can tell me if you have another hobby other than crochet in the comments under this video, and I will be picking a subscriber who answers the question to win a free pattern in an upcoming podcast. And now it's time for News of the Week. News of the Week. My youngest came in so cute, right? Well, if you don't know, he's very cute. <laughs> so he came in and he was like, oh, can I make a hat? And I'm like, okay, yes, of course you can. So for Christmas a couple years ago, I guess, yeah, a couple years ago, I gave him one of those Centro knitting machines that so he could like knit his own hats. Conveniently, I have it right here, this bad boy. So dug it off, had to literally dust it off. Dusty, dusty, dusty. So if you have not got into the knitting machine phase, craze, it's kind of a fun thing to do. It should be a fun thing to do. It can also be a frustrating thing to do. Shh, don't tell anyone. Okay, I'm gonna tell you, it can be really frustrating. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, I could have crocheted like four hats by the time we got like one hat out of this. Good Lord. Anyway, I'm sure I'm doing something wrong and I'm, I'm welcome your suggestions and tips for successfully using that machine because I find it, it's a great idea. Don't get me wrong. It would work out great. If you could just use it and it would just produce a hat, I would love it. I think I might be one of like an Addy girl, like something a little more solid that is, is a little more like sturdy. Maybe that's my problem. However, started out, what was the first yarn? Oh, this yarn here. So this is almost a four worsted weight acrylic. It almost is. It, the machine didn't like it. It started, um, like just drop it, like not picking up stitches. It would like just leave the one loop behind several times. So had to frog it back. Ask my son to be like, okay, can you wind up the yarn? And he's like, okay, this is what it gives me. Yeah, that's my ball of yarn now. I guess he got tired. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. So this is a milk cotton I got from a yarn shop in Nairobi. So that's why I wanted to use it because I didn't really like need it. So I'm like, just make a hat. It has some colors in it. It'll be fine. Uh, it, the machine did not like it. So ixnay to that. That did not work out. Then I'm like, what about some good old gelato? You know you love gelato, right? Uh, that didn't work. It was working great. Look at the colors even. The color change was gonna be amazing. All of that was gonna be amazing. I uh, got it started, you know, quite a little ways down. Gave it to my son to do. And I think, you know, when you're cranking it, I think if he stops, maybe it slipped a couple times. Uh, and anyway, it also didn't pick up all the stitches. But it was working great for me. It worked fantastic for me, but after that, it didn't work fantastic for my son. So that had to get frogged back. And then, it may or may not have gotten tangled up. So I spent a lot of time, which is most probably where my frustration came from, not so much the machine, more so untangling yarn. I had to untangle this twice. I won't get into it, but it wasn't that fun. And it was gelato, which I really like. And now I have a ball that looks like that. So not the best day. So I'm like, give mommy needs a break. Hmm? Kind of like, mommy needs a break. So, so took a break while I cleaned up the mess. That was my break. You know, I'm mom, that's what you do, right? Take a break, what's that mean? Cleaning the house. So I cleaned the house, got myself a little pulled together, felt a bit bad. I'm like, you know, he really wants to make a hat. Right, it's just yarn, it's just, it's fine. Like, let's figure it out. So, 
I'm pretty sure my machine, my Centro, likes a DK weight yarn, so not worsted and probably not too thin. So I went and got myself a ball of Magic Light. Now you're gonna love Magic Light. If you don't already love Magic Light, you will. It's fantastic. So Magic Light and went to make a hat with that. Grabbed a ball of good old Magic Light and my screwdriver attachment thingy, which also I found cleaning up the house. That took me another hour <laughs> to find that bad boy. And then... Ta-da! <laughs> so I am still not happy with the result. I don't think it's the greatest thing ever, but I do think it's a structurally sound hat, which is all we're really going for at the end of the day. So there's still big messy holes in it. Let me show you over there. See big messy holes? It's not the greatest thing on the planet, but I couldn't bear making a fourth one. So hopefully, I can figure out what I did wrong with this bad boy. If you have any tips or tricks for using a knitting machine, like a Centro one, other than get an Addy one, which I might do, maybe that'll be my Christmas gift or something, because it is a good thing. It's a good tool to have to be like, oh, you want a hat? Let's make a hat, right? And your kids can do it. But I just don't like the frustrating part. My Centro basically drops stitches or messes up whenever it feels like it. I've heard you can put weights on it, on the, on the yarn to help it like not do that, I think. I don't know. If it maybe it needs to be oiled, I don't know that either. So if you have a Centro and you get it yours to make things, can you tell me your tips and tricks for getting yours to work or what I should do to get mine working, at least so my kids could make hats? So I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I'm waiting for you in that video right there and stay hooked.